is my book called Playing Solo Jazz Piano. And in the book, I talk a lot about ways to play swing. Um, I talk a lot about ways to play kind of more modern jazz solo piano. Um, but there's also a lot about what we sometimes call Latin styles. Now, some people don't like that term because it kind of groups all these different musical traditions together. And I think that's probably right. So today, I really want to focus in on Brazilian, uh, how we can play Brazilian music in a solo piano style, particularly bossa nova. Um, we mainly play two styles of um, Brazilian music and jazz. Bossa Nova is kind of a medium tempo or slower groove, and Samba is kind of a faster groove. Now, there's many, many more grooves out of Brazil, but those are the ones that have really come and become standard in the jazz tradition. So um, it's really rare, actually, if you look at the recorded repertoire, to find examples of our jazz greats playing in a Bossa Nova style. Um, I don't know of any Oscar Peterson playing Bossa Nova. I don't know of any... Bill Evans playing bossa nova, as solo piano that is. I know of uh, instances of them playing bossa nova uh, with their trios or with larger groups. So it's pretty rare to find that kind of thing. Um, and there's a few reasons. I, I think, you know, one is that bossa nova has these three parts which are maybe a little bit more complicated than the three different parts in swing music, right? So bossa nova has this bass line. to make it sound like bossa nova really without that bass line. It also has a really kind of intricate middle part. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. One way that I kind of standard teach is the partito alto rhythm, which goes like this. By the way, I'm using Girl from Ipanema, um, Antonio Carlos Chobin's tune as an example. Just, um, in case you're wondering, and then oftentimes bossa nova melodies are themselves very syncopated and complex, right? Um, Girl is not the most complicated melody ever. So to really do those things in a satisfying way and to keep that kind of groove going, um, solo piano is really difficult. Um, so like I said, there's not a lot of examples of people doing it. Uh, Fred Hirsch does have a whole album of Jobim tunes. He doesn't play too many of them as what I would really consider kind of a standard bossa nova feel. Um, but he does at least attempt, um, and he does really well, obviously, to play that music solo piano. So what I want to look at today is some ways that you can actually play bossa nova solo piano. Um, and maybe we'll hit on a little bit of samba as well. So the first thing, the most common thing that I, I see done is that you kind of remove some of the uh, rhythmic content from a bossa nova. And sometimes we, we call it like a ECM feel or a Euro bossa, where it doesn't necessarily have that don't and you make it a little bit more spacey feeling. Um, so ironically, my first way of playing bossa nova is to not play bossa nova at all, but to kind of round off the edges of the bossa nova. And you will hear more of this kind of thing. So if I'm playing Girl from Ipanema, I'm not going to try to do this. I'm also not really going to try to do something like that partito also rhythm. It's just going to kind of be more floaty, offbeat eighth notes. As you can hear I'm using some pedal. Um, so the underlying feeling to me is that it's kind of got all these eighth notes here. So that has the edges really smoothed off. And this is a nice way, you know, playing like this, you can use more of the piano. Like all this is implied, but you don't have to play it all the time. And that's going to be a common theme here. 
that you're going to imply some things without always having to reference it and play it. So that's the first thing I would suggest is round off some of those edges, don't play a bossa nova at all. Now, if you really want that bossa nova feel, um, one thing that you can do, especially on a tune like Girl from Ipanema, is you can kind of have the left hand dedicated to the bass, and you can play the melody and the chords kind of at once. And it works pretty well because the melodies are often so syncopated that you actually get a lot of syncopation in the chords. So. changing the melody a little bit to add some more rhythm to the chords. So two, um, two things to think about to make your articulation correct for a bossa nova. The first is that um, you're going to feel kind of the beat and the sway and the groove of the bossa nova more if you emphasize the back beat. That is beat three. So. going to make it feel really good and in fact in Brazil when they um, have lots of kind of marching music oftentimes they have two bass drums a smaller one and a bigger one and they'll play the smaller one on beat one and then the bigger one on beat three the second thing is that bossa nova has to be very light um, it's really a guitar tradition rather than a piano tradition so we want to minimize the percussive aspects of the piano, and we want to kind of focus on these light, airy, ringing aspects of the piano. Um, because it's Brazil that I'm thinking of when I talk with my students about playing bossa nova, I talk about, you know, you can pretend like you're batting a beach ball into the air, um, right? Brazil such a beach culture that I've got this little beach ball, and I'm thinking more of making an upwards motion with my hand rather than going... I'm thinking about kind of lifting that tissue out of the tissue box that kind of motion. in college um, who talked about watching Brazilians dance and he said that their lower body looks very still but then their upper body has all of this movement to it and that's kind of how it has to be with the music too this is just providing really the bedrock and then there's all this syncopation and all this interesting things happening in the upper parts of the instrument now another possibility um, is kind of fun and I talk about this in the book but I'll show you here um, there's a rhythm called the choro, and for my Portuguese-speaking friends, I apologize, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that terribly, um, but it's something like choro, which is kind of akin to Brazilian ragtime, um, but being Brazilian, it's got a lot more syncopation than American ragtime. So just like American ragtime, you're often doing um, kind of a standard beat one and beat three, but whereas American ragtime, we would put the chords right on beat two and beat four, right? Brazilian ragtime, they put the chords on all the ands, so. And I'm not an expert on choro music, but my understanding is that they often have kind of very florid scalar melodies. especially for a faster piece like a samba, you know, if I really wanted to play a fast version of Girl from Ipanema, I could use this shoro. I don't really like this tune at that tempo, but just hypothetically. a little bit 
bit of pedal. So I'm now kind of I'm doing both. I'm playing the shoro in the left hand and I'm adding some chords in the right. beautiful style. Now, um, one thing to think about, when I play it, I like to anticipate the chord. So, you know, if I'm starting with this F, I know I have C in the diagram, but the girl from Even Even starts on an F. If I'm starting with F, I start on the chord on the end of four first. Now, I've talked to some uh, real Brazilians, some of whom support that, and some who say, no, 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 you start the chord right on beat. So I would say play around and, you know, figure out what you like best. I think either one is possible, you know, while being at least somewhat authentic to the style. Now, the most complex thing that you can do is you can really actually try to keep some amount of all three parts going. And so, as I do this, I use my shared hand voicings. So, you know, maybe I'm thinking about this for the first chord. So, I'll try to go... Sliding up my thumb so you can see them in the keyboard camera. into that center of the piano. So I would recommend trying to find some times when you could do something in the upper register um, just to break that tension. complex scalar melody, good luck kind of keeping the comping going in the bottom. Another way that you can use these shared hand voicings is you can kind of take out that bass and get the Tito alto rhythm going against the syncopated melody, you still do have some of that feeling of the bossa nova. So I hope that, that helps you. Um, it's like I said, it's not a thing that you're going to find a ton of in the recorded piano history. And uh, if you have favorite solo piano bossa nova performances, please comment, send them my way. I'm really interested in learning more. Um, but those are some ways that you can get started. Again, my name is Jeremy Siskin. This book is Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Trust me, one copy is not enough. You really need three or four in your house. Just, you don't, you don't want to be caught without one. 
Um, you can get it at jeremysiskin.com. Please uh, like and subscribe. All that stuff helps. And I'll see you later.